This week on Self Help Sundays. Thanks for the intro, Nat. Um, great effort uh, having Kalani. Um, recapping last week, um, Fatherhood Podcast uh, had my mum on, which was, uh, was pretty funny. Uh, had some good chats. We had some really good catch ups during the week as well. Um, and, and gone over even more things. Um, had some really positive feedback from, from people, um, some messages that were, were quite inspiring. Um, people happy to hear the peacock talk a bit of rubbish. Um, but as long as we get people talking, I think that's a, that's a good thing. Um, especially Simon Duckworth, Ducky, AKA. Um, instead of texting, sending a, a direct message, actually sent a video um, of him congratulating uh, on the baby that we've just had and I uh, just thought it was quite personal and um, really appreciated it. So thanks, Ducky. Um, now, this week, I'm going to go over a few things, some of it pretty topical. Um, there's quite a few things with, uh, obviously, we've just had a baby. Having a baby during COVID, um, I was really nervous about, a little bit anxious. Um, do I go to the shops, get bread and milk? Am I going to catch anything from the trolley, then bring it home, give it to Nat, Isabel, give it to the baby, um, infect the baby? Um, there's a lot of things that are unknown and questions that just couldn't be answered. Um, and then stressing quite a lot of about the what ifs, like we all do. Um, I think that's part of the, the issues, the unknown, and, and um, what if this happens, what if that happens. Uh, one of the big ones for me was if I catch something out and about um, and then have to go into quarantine and, and miss the birth of uh, our child, um, that would have killed me. It would have been really tough. Um, luckily, it all went really well um, on that bit. One of the pluses for that was in hospital um, and sorry to in-laws and whoever wanted to visit but it was kind of nice only having one person support person allowed in to the hospital and not having visitors um, for a few things it, it meant that Nat and I could um, just spend some quality time with Kalani um, get to know him um, what a special bond in the first few days few hours um, it also meant that the, um, the midwives and nurses and doctors could actually just do what they're there to do and they didn't have to go get vases or flowers or tell anyone else what room such and such is in and Auntie Mavis coming through with all sorts of boiled lollies and stuff. It was really good and uh, having, having a chat with a few of them they tended to think that uh, if they could keep it like that going forward they would. Um, it meant it was more relaxed for everybody. Um, I think the mums and dads were more relaxed and they could spend quality time without any stresses uh, with their newborns. Um, and that being the trooper she was, we had the baby uh, about 5 a.m. Sunday morning. Sorry, we didn't, Nat did. Um, and then we, she was gone by, uh, we were home by midday uh, Monday. So a bit over 24 hours. Um, it was a, a pretty intense, crazy time to be uh, in in the room having the baby, the birthing suite. Um, I've got to say, I had a bit of a joke about it at the time. It was, it was quite funny. I was standing there assisting two midwives, basically doing everything and then just telling me what to do. And I felt really useless. And then as soon as I realised that, I thought... Um, it's really selfish uh, and a, a bit of a stupid thing to think about. It's got nothing to do with uh, what you're doing and how you feel. At, at that point in time, it's about getting out a, a boy or a girl safely uh, and looking after the wife and, and making sure everyone's in a good headspace, a good, good spot to be in. But I thought it was, in reflection, it's, it's probably um, quite healthy and quite safe to feel useless in that way uh, instead of bottling it up 
Um, I said it straight away to the, the midwives and, and Nat, and we all had a bit of a laugh, and I said, well, there's, there's nothing really I can do here apart from holding your hand and saying how good you're doing. And um, I think we can bottle things up and um, let them get to us and fester, and then once it gets to a certain point, breaking point, um, the lid comes off and, and we tend to um, do something stupid. Um, and it, it's just much easier talking about things as they, they pop up. Um, but yeah, feeling useless in the uh, the birthing suite was quite funny. Um, of all the places. Uh, I will tell you that it's a really bad place for dad jokes. Um, there's probably only three or four that most dads make in those instances and we're saying none of them are good. Um, soak it all up. Uh, enjoy the moment and I think uh, everyone's is better off in the end um, but we've got a little baby boy Kalani James out of it um, fit and healthy um, that's all you can ask for um, also uh, with things like that popping up uh, it, it brought a few things up for me on um, mistakes on in parenting that you think you've made um, and then on reflection a week later months years later it actually um, has turned out being a, a blessing in disguise um, I think most people know my story um, fathering a, a boy when I was 21 um, young stupid uh, very selfish um, I'd always grown up saying that when I have a kid um, I'll always want to be there for them never want to run um, you always want what you didn't have for, for that child um, so I said I'd never run and then at the split moment that uh, someone says Kyle we're having a baby um, you shit yourself and uh, you know you're not really looking after yourself at the moment you don't think about the pain that you've gone through um, and you run uh, so I did that um, ran from my issues ran from my problems um, and for quite a few years I, I put that to the back of my mind as much as I could um, and trying to um, tell myself that I was doing the, the right thing and um, running from the issues uh, was the last thing on my mind. I thought oh, I'm making the right decision for the kid and rah, rah, rah. and then every now and then you'd, it would pop up that you were actually doing what you said you would never do. Um, I thought that was a, the hugest mistake, biggest mistake. Um, and it, it, it cuts in and affects everyone differently. But uh, for me, you self-medicate. Um, it's uh, you hit the alcohol uh, and, and whatnot and push it out of your mind. You, you try and live the, the life of um, those sorts of parenting um, commitments don't matter. Uh, and I was doing exactly what was done to me, so I know where it came from. I had an opportunity to stop that in its tracks, and I didn't feel quite bad about that. Um, it took me quite a few years to get um, Connor uh, back on side with me and, and his mum to, to trust that I wasn't going to run away again and be stupid and um, actually do what I said I was going to do. I think one of the last things I said when, uh, when she goes, uh, how can we believe that you'll be here? And I just basically said, well, you can't. Um, what will will justify that and, and confirm that is when one day we look back and you say, oh, yeah, you were right. You, you did actually do what you said you were going to do. It took me quite a few years to get Connor back on side and um, with how everything's panned out, we've had, uh, I met Nat, we've had Isabel, um, we moved out to uh, near Connor as well, so we can all spend time together. And now we've had little Kalani James. Um, it's 
it's been spectacular. So, yes, it was a stupid thing that I did. It was, it was a, a bad moment in my life where I've um, mentally and physically sort of punished myself um, over the years and just doing what you said you'd never do. It's, uh, it's quite confronting to admit. Um, but <clears throat> I think looking back everything did work out uh, obviously that mistake would never happen again but maybe if I didn't make that mistake um, then uh, I would still be doing things now so sometimes you've got to always see the positive but um, I think making what I thought was a big mistake at the time in the whole scheme of things is now quite a small um, issue um, it gets corrected and fixed every day and, and now I've got three beautiful kids they all get along they all um, get embarrassed by me for silly jokes uh, especially when Connor and I go through Macca's drive through and we order uh, 170 chicken nuggets uh, in the drive through it's, it's always um, good fun uh, also with <clears throat> Another thing is um, we've we've all heard about it. We never really talk about it, and it, it's one of the things that never popped up with with Nat and I during our um, our initial pregnancy with Isabel um, was uh, postnatal depression and how that affects um, females, how that affects mums and dads. Um, no one really talks about it, and therefore I, I don't think you can proper, properly plan for it. Um, we assume that little things that were popping up were just hormonal changes. Um, ladies having a baby, the mum's having a baby, and your body goes through um, changes, and, and things are out of balance, and they need to rebalance and align. And we just assume that. Um, the, the discrepancies in, it, in mood changes and emotions in both of us was just um, just the, the pregnancy and what happened and um, we left it for far too long got got to the point of, um, of no return and it, it was quite confronting so I think in from me if I was to give advice to any anyone um, if you're feeling those changes um, emotionally, mentally, um, you just need to talk about them. Um, we talk about it all the time before the pregnancy, during, um, and, and certainly after. Uh, there's no surprises anymore. Um, I think it's one of those things that we can discuss and, and we know what to look out for. So if the slightest thing pops up now, we, we're on the front foot and, and chatting about it and um, discussing it with friends there's, there's nothing wrong with asking a friend um, that's having a baby have you thought about how you would handle postnatal depression for yourself or your wife partner um, it's a good conversation to have and uh, I think at the moment there's a, a bit of a, a push for guys to talk more and more and, and more openly about this sort of stuff and it, we don't have to think that we're weak um, anymore it's uh, it's about proper parenting and, and being a proper partner um, and so yourself if you're not asking the right questions you're not giving a hundred percent of what you possibly could or probably should um, so I think that um, probably lends into a, a bit of the, um, the mental health spruiking that people are doing currently um, everyone knows Wayne Schwoss uh, He's a massive advocate for, for guys supporting each other and speaking up and um, not feeling as if it's uh, we're being weak. And I think we, we've been programmed over ages to think that uh, guys don't talk about their emotion, guys don't have suicidal thoughts, um, guys don't get angry. Um, there's lots of things that... Um, you would probably look at and think, well, do guys get anxious? Um, 
men get bullied as well. Um, we often think that we're alone. Uh, and that's where, for me, like going back to a few things, self-medicating, drinking too much, um, running from my issues, um, the postnatal, feeling useless during the pregnancy, all of those things go back to um, thinking that I was alone or I am alone and, and no one is, everyone's um, got a, a friend out there or someone that they can they can reach out to. Um, I think this week, so Men's Health Week, is 15th to the 21st um, of June, but it doesn't have to be a week. It's a, a week that we can um, highlight uh, some of the, the things that pop up uh, and then hopefully guys feel a little bit more comfortable uh, in having a chat moving forward. Um, Uh, on that too, um, for anyone that's watching this, um, friends, anyone that, that's, if you're willing to listen and so am I, um, I want to try and get um, something started where people don't feel comfortable, don't feel uh, strongly enough or confident enough about talking on issues um, you don't really want to reach out to your friends or family or anyone and say um, I've got an issue got a problem um, I'd like to to see someone post uh, just them having a milkshake uh, it could be on Facebook Instagram it could be a photo it just could be some text um, at such and such cafe drinking a milkshake and what I see out of this is if I uh, see any of my friends or, or anyone tag me in a, a milkshake post um, I'll reach out to you uh, as, as soon as I can um, and and see if uh, if I can help or just a chat you want to have a have a talk um, but I know if you post anything to do with a milkshake a photo or, or just tagging yourself in having a milkshake from the fish shop um, anything like that um, I'm more than happy to reach out, and if you're willing to, to put that out there, uh, then so am I. Uh, I think it, it's something easy we can do. Um, coming from the alcohol industry, I think we we tend to turn to beer and whiskey and, and alcohol um, a little too easily, a little too quickly. I've done it myself. Um, so sometimes that can cloud the issues that pop up and, and um, having a beer and turn into having 10, 12 beers then suddenly the issue is worse than what it was to start with so yes it is great to catch up and, and have a beer and a chat and um, talk with your mates I think it's also um, quite responsible and a, a good way that um, maybe you have a milkshake talk about it when all of this blows over and we can finally go out and see venues properly and um, catch up with friends and family. Um, maybe down the coast you might go for a drive um, and get a stop somewhere and get a milkshake. Just tag yourself in it. If I see it, um, I'll respond pretty much straight away. We'll just keep it in the DMs, in the messages. Um, but yeah, if anyone's feeling um, like it's a bit too much or just want to have a chat, Want to talk about anything that I've been through? Uh, there's there's plenty more. We'll, we'll certainly get to it over time, but um, I'll be more than happy to to have a chat. Um, I've also got a, a bit of a uh, <laughs> something else that popped up. Um, more lighthearted note was um, feeding at night. Now. Uh, Man boobs are there, but they're not milk boobs. Um, you want to be supportive to your wife, your family, and get up and help during the night. Um, help with the feeding and all of that. Everybody needs sleep. Um, we're, we're all going to work better if, if we're properly rested. Uh, you feel pretty 
pretty useless if you you're breastfeeding your wife's breastfeeding and um, she needs to get up and either express or actually feed and then there's no real reason for you to be up anyway and you're sort of getting in the way but you can't really sleep because then you become that dad that isn't helping so get up make a cup of tea get your wife some water biscuits um, do what you can to make them comfortable maybe as soon as the feeding's done grab the baby um, and, and she can go back to sleep and, and rest up but it's just one of those funny things that no one really warns you about and just pops up and you think well why did no one say this um, but anyway and look it there's plenty of things that uh, we can discuss on men's mental health parenting um, all of those so if you've got any questions or you want to see something um, in a future um, episode just let me know message me through there's uh, self-help Sundays on YouTube um, or just direct message me personally um, and I'll, I'll try and fit it in there's, there's plenty of things what I've done is and go through is it's not the right way or the wrong way and I'm not saying it has to be this you've got to do it my way and all of that I, I think just the fact that we're talking about it um, is a is a win and the best way to um, to move forward is to to learn about the processes and what we've done in the past and the more we talk about it the better we are um, and we in end of the day we just want to be better better parents better people better partners um, and I, I think it's uh, it's a beautiful thing we're, we're all getting together footy players are doing it athletes um, local guys at the pub are actually talking these days or when they open um, so we don't have to be scared or worried uh, about opening our uh, our minds and our voices and, and letting people know um, it's okay to be insecure uh, and have emotions and uh, I think we're on a we're on a pretty good path, uh, so we'll see how we go. Now, most people that know me, um, I'm going to try and end this on a, a cheerful note. Most people know me; they know that my enthusiasm outweighs my ability. I always thought I was a great basketballer. I was just taller than the other kids. That's the only reason I was good. Never learned to jump. Um, I thought it was funny, I found a trophy, it's one of those participation trophies that they give the kid in the team that is not good enough to actually get proper ones, um, Belgrade basketball from 88-89 and the importance for me of finding this was 89 was the year my wife was born, <laughs> so I said to her when you were born you were a superstar I was mediocre at best, so I got the participation award. Um, I just keep it on the desk now with Clancy the camel behind us. Um, everyone knows I'm an amazing joke teller. Just want to leave you with a couple of things, one of mine and then one from the book. Uh, if you throw a pencil in the air is it still stationary? No? Okay. Um, how long does it take to buy a Mexican dog? About two hours? <laughs> uh, there'll be more of that to come following up. But I um, hope everyone's uh, enjoyed this. If you haven't, that's, that's cool. If you have, fantastic. Um, I've enjoyed it. It's a bit of a mental uh, health check for me. Um, I feel really good. Or nothing's wrong. I just like talking about this sort of stuff and um, love the possibility of helping someone, even if it's just one person. Um, to me, that makes a great day, a great week, a great year. Um, if I can turn around on my deathbed and say I helped someone 
get through something, um, then that's uh, I've had a really good, good career. So thank you for listening. Um, I think it's time I put up a couple of cocktails, um, how-tos, and well, I think we've got a, um, a cooking video to pop up soon also, so um, stay tuned. Thanks for listening.